All right, check out this sucker. So the bounds on this one have a little bit of a surprise right here. Yeah, so we're gonna be integrating the square root of x squared plus y squared, which is just a good old fashioned cone. Uh, but now we're gonna be looking at the volume of it that's over this region here, where we've got the square root of two x minus x squared. And that doesn't seem quite as friendly as some of the things that we've seen previously. So how do we deal with that? Well, best thing to do, get to be friends with your domain. So let's look. So this is going from y equals zero to y equals square root of two x minus x squared. So what can we learn about this? Well, if we square both sides, this becomes um, x squared plus y squared equals two x. And so then we can say, okay, how do I make this look like a circle or something? And then at some point it occurs to you, oh, if I pull over that 2x, x squared minus 2x, and then I add one to both sides, plus one, plus y squared equals plus one, then I can actually, um, I've, I've completed the square. And so then I can factor that as x minus one quantity squared plus y squared equals one. So now I have uh, apparently a circle of radius one, but it's no longer centered at the origin. Instead, it's shifted forward one in the, the x direction. So we're actually looking at this circle right here. Uh, put on, okay. So this is at one. <clears throat> okay, so that's the shape that we're doing. Uh, now, how do we figure out how to um, set this up in polar coordinates? Because polar coordinates would be really nice for contending with that integrand. That's definitely a function of r, right? Hmm. Okay, so you look at the various um, formulas that, that we've just uh, written down and try and figure out, okay, which of those looks most amenable to putting into polar? Well, actually, if we look at this one, I've got two components right there. So on the one hand, the um, x squared plus y squared, that's definitely r squared. And then on the other hand, remember that our polar coordinates are x equals r cosine theta and y equals r sine theta. And so in particular, I can take this one and substitute it in for that x. And so this gets me r squared is equal to uh, two r cosine theta. And then since we don't deal with the situation where r is equal to zero, we can divide by it from both sides. So this is r equals two cosine theta. And so now I have a description of this um, <coughs> curve boundary right here. And so the way that we are actually going to be integrating this is um, when we set it up in, in polar, draw another picture of it over here. So we've got, boom, all right. I love this when this thing works properly. Uh, let's see, oops, there we go. Okay, so, we are going to be integrating from the origin, right? And then we're gonna go outward in a radial line, zap. And then we're gonna stop when we get to the boundary. So that's, that's gonna be what things look like no matter what direction uh, we go in. Zip out there and stop when we get there. Okay, so and if you if you look at this, if we take these lines like arbitrarily close to the uh, the axes like this, you see that the lower bound is is always going to be at the origin, and the outer bound is going to be on this circle here. So this is a long-winded way of saying that we set up the integration as going from zero to r equals zero to r equals two cosine theta. And then we're gonna go, apparently we uh, started with our, our first one down here 
at theta equals um, minus pi over 2. And then we take all those theta values increasing until we get to this one right here, theta equals positive pi over 2. So our outer integral goes from minus pi over 2 to positive pi over 2. And then we've got, um, let's see, so our integrand right here is actually just r. Okay, so we've got an r. And then we've got our Jacobian, r dr d theta. And we're ready to go. Hard part done. Now it's time for just the crunching. Okay, so once again, uh, we have a situation where theta appears in the... Um, in the interior integral. So we can't do the shortcut and just pull out a factor of two pi, or, or I guess in this case, pi. We have to go through the whole thing and haul along our minus pi over two to pi over two, all the way through the problem. Um, so let's see, so, oh, and I've made a mistake. Let's see. Uh, did you spot what the mistake was? So the mistake was um, I wasn't paying attention closely. And look at this, this bottom integration there, that's zero. Y does not take negative values. Oh, fail, fail, fail. So so this is actually um, wrong. I am only um, integrating this portion right here. And so these lines I drew were pretty, but they're stupid because they're going the wrong way. Um, in fact, and, and also my, my markings for, for theta were wrong as well. So let me fix those. Dude, and this is a rough night here in the Pierce lab. Okay, so the first one is actually gonna be this one here, which is now too thin because my, my pen is dumb. Hold on. Well, that's serious. Okay. Um, so we're gonna go from theta equals zero around to theta equals pi over two. So I guess I can zag that guy and, and here we'll talk about like, okay, so going this way, going this way. Okay, now we have some nice pretty things and they're all on the right side where they're supposed to be. Okay, um, so in fact, this is going from zero. There we go. Okay, sorry about that. So, 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 so what do we do now? Okay, so now we integrate r squared and we get r cubed over three and we go from zero to cos, uh, two cosine theta d theta. And so that's going to be zero to pi over two of eight thirds cosine cubed theta d theta. And then you whip out of your back pocket the fact that uh, cosine cubed is cosine squared times cosine, which is one minus sine squared times cosine. So some mucking around with trigonometric identities and that allows you to figure out a way to integrate this thing. Oh, you know what? Let's pull that 8 thirds out of the way. It's just mucking things up. Um, 1 minus sine squared theta cosine theta. So I can use that cosine theta for a du now. And uh, let's see, banging that out, we get 8 thirds. Um, sine theta uh, minus one third sine cubed theta and from zero to pi over two. And when the dust settles, the pi's cancel and you get 16 over nine for your trouble. There's our area.